in the unboxing video on the reference website before installing the MRT equalizer. It is necessary to confirm the cleanliness of the marked area. We take the Type-C hard drive with PCB number 810003 as an example. The upper pins correspond to the power probe of the equalizer. Used to power the hard drive, in conjunction with SATA for operating the disk. The lower area is mainly for reading and writing ROM chip. Due to WD portable series being in a sealed environment. Poor heat dissipation may occur, leading to oxidation of the circuit board with prolonged use. The result is that the software does not recognize the chip. Or there are abnormalities in reading and writing ROM. Here, it is recommended to use an eraser for wiping first. Then clean with high concentration alcohol. After cleaning, the PCB must be wiped dry to avoid residual moisture. After installing the MRT equalizer, first, connect Type-C interface. Note, Type-C power supply and MRT port for hard drive power supply cannot work simultaneously. The Type-C interface mainly serves two purposes, reading and writing ROM and adjusting signals. This tutorial will introduce the unlocking and firmware backup operations of MRT equalizer. The troubleshooting for 190 faults will be explained separately in a new tutorial. Statement, all operations in this tutorial are based on version 2193. Before unlocking, we open the website. If accessing the website via HTTPS is not smooth, use HTTP. Find the link related to the Western Digital PCB number. Download the document. The document records the WD PCB numbers collected in recent years. We need to pay attention to whether the board number is locked and if MRT supports unlocking. Note, MRT equalizer only supports WD USB and Type-C series. Here, we only focus on 2.5 USB and 2.5 Type-C. The demonstration PCB number is 810003, ROM size is 1024 kilobytes. Enter MRT Equalizer ROM tool. CH9102's COM port is the device name for the equalizer. Some Windows systems have streamlined some components. You need to download and install the driver from the website for it to be displayed. Identify chip model. Log displays a capacity of 1024 kilobytes, which is the ROM size. Sometimes there may be cases where the chip is not supported. We choose any model, and the capacity at this time has no reference significance. In recent years, common WD ROMs are mostly 512 or 1024 in size. It's best to refer to the documentation. If uncertain, backup ROMs of both sizes. The chip has now been identified. First select 32 kilobytes for a quick confirmation of ROM data. Most of WD's new series ROMs start with 5A04. Choose size 1024 and wait for the reading to complete.
we save the ROM. Recommend naming the folder based on the model. On main interface, select WD program. Switch to the 800 family. Choose the 810003 PCB number. When there are multiple families for the same board number, choose any one. After successful unlocking, an unlocked ROM file will be generated in the same path. There is an option here called Disable 411. Many times, when disk encounters a 109 default, there may be issues like long busy or automatic power off. Checking this option can eliminate the steps of short circuiting TV9, TV10, and disabling 411. If there is no power on fault, do not check the option. Note, version 2193 has optimized the function. Please use version 2193 or higher. Return to Equalizer ROM tool. Write the unlocked ROM with 411 disabled. Note that 6000 is mainly for ROM chips of 1024 and below. Since the equalizer is more stable in reading and writing ROM compared to programmer method, here, we do not consider rereading the ROM to compare the data with the unlocked ROM. Writing successful. We observe the header data using 32 kilobytes for a quick confirmation that the data has indeed been written. Now it is necessary to exit the equalizer ROM tool to disconnect the power and release the serial port. If you want to keep the current program, you need to manually disconnect the power and serial port. On the main interface, click Signal Adjustment icon. Select the CH9102COM port. Click Connect. On the left side is the output signal, on the right side is the input signal. The PCB number will be displayed in the configuration column. Click Default Configuration. If the hard drive is unstable after using the default signal, we only need to adjust the last two items of the input signal. If it was originally set to middle middle, change it to high high, and vice versa. Finally, save the configuration to the chip and disconnect the COM port. Now unplug the Type C interface. Operate the disk using the SATA method. We switch ATA0 to SATA1 mode. Note, modifications take effect in real time only for the current session. If you restart MRT, you need to switch again. Power on and enter WD program. Identify family, confirm the selection of normal mode. ID displays an anomaly, due to writing the ROM with 411 disabled. Click on Backup All Resources. It's recommended to make a note. The backup effects of track and ABA are the same. Here only consider by ID or by track. We find that the track backup method has the best effect, prioritize selecting by track. Due to the easy encountering of lots of bad sectors when reading 190. First check the option to skip 190. Tracks represent the backup of tracks. If module backup is smooth, you can check it on the second attempt. For now, let's skip it. 2193 version optimized the strategy for handling bad sectors in tracks and modules. When encountering bad sectors, it defaults to skipping the current track and module. So, as long as there is no severe scratch, Better choose by track to back up two copies. Then, back up tracks. 
you can see that the module backup is very smooth. Now, backup tracks. You can also achieve this through read tracks function. Skip bad tracks means skipping a track when encountering a bad sector. If unchecked, it will continue to read the next sector. You can check skip save tracks if needed. Open the working folder. Folder SA Backup is the firmware saved from backup all resources. Folder data is the firmware saved from other functions. Now we need to backup 190. Manually input 0190, locate to 190. Backup 190 by default ID method. When the 190 backup progress gets stuck, it's usually due to encountering a large number of bad sectors. We need to wait for its end. It is recommended to enable copy 1, read an additional 190 copy by track method. Now learn how to clear 190. Switch to 190 read by ID. Copy the first two lines. Control plus A to select all data, right-click to fill data with 00. Paste it back into the first two lines. Save as 19000.rpm. Note to select ID method for writing 190. As this drive has number 190 faults, the writing process is skipped here. Open T2 editor, let's confirm the LBA data for 190. Re-enter the program, and find that even after clearing 190, ID is still not recognized. At this point, enable 411, power off and on. This method can solve power on faults caused solely by 190. After obtaining the correct ID, create a new folder. Move the backup to the current folder. With this, the preparatory work is completed. Subsequently, only T2 editor needs to be used to handle the 190 module.